Welcome to Joe's Astrology. This is the birth chart for Tony Hinchcliffe from the show Kill Tony. If you haven't seen the show Kill Tony, I would check it out. It's a pretty good show. It's really funny. Tony Hinchcliffe, he's a comedian. And one of my ex-girlfriends put me on to this show, and I have a story. Uh, it's titled Mars in the Seventh House that is link to this um link to this show kill tony check it out i'll put the link down in the description and this is a very interesting story uh, i'm sorry this is a very interesting chart as well so he's a sun uh actually lot, lots of interesting things to say here he has a sun in gemini moon in libra and we don't have the birth time so that's not correct that we don't know is rising and he has this stellium in Gemini, Chiron there in Gemini. So right away we can see uh, that there is a heavy Mercury influence. Let's start with Mer let's start with Mercury. There's a heavy Gemini. Uh, we could say you know someone who's got a lot of Gemini could be a good comedian because they can get up there and they can speak. They might have a, a quick mind uh, around certain certain subjects like or certain um, things like being a comedian you have you have to have that quick quick mind I mean you don't have to but it, it definitely helps if you watch his show you see him up there he always has I, I think it's it's pretty much live and um, um, not scripted so he, he just always comes up with something funny to say in the moment and we can see here that there's a yod here between Pluto, Jupiter, and this Mercury. Or you could just say, in general, this stellium. But let's pick on Mercury. So there's these two inconjuncts between Pluto, Mercury, and Jupiter, Mercury. There's also a quintile at the base of that yod between Pluto and Ju Jupiter. So we can see everything is really without getting into the definition of that you can just see that just look at these planets and look at what's involved we see mercury at the apex so mercury is heavily emphasized in that configuration then we see here at the bottom we see pluto and jupiter so this is a guy whose mind uh, without having the birth time we, we can just speculate that his mind he's concerned with um, with his Jupiter in Capricorn, he's concerned in being the best. He's concerned in climbing the ladder and getting to the top. And we know about, we do know about this guy. He started at one of those comedy, uh, comedy shows. I don't know if it's where he is now. He started as a doorman, I, I believe, and then now he's the, the um, head of the show. Uh, and he has that air about him too. Kind of like sits back and he's smoking cigarettes and he's just, he's just like. Doesn't give doesn't give a fuck. Um, you know he's the man. He's the he's the Capricorn. He's the authority. And he also had and with that Pluto, he's he if you if you do his, check out his show, he's not. Um, he they're into deep things. They talk about deep things. They got I think they have had um, Joe Rogan on the show and things like that. So he's he's very much a psychologist. Or into psychology for sure. He has that kind of psychological mind. We can see there with that Pluto Mercury. And even the Chiron, the Mercury Chiron in Gemini. Uh, there's so much more to really bring into this. Well, we, we have that north node there and everything's moving towards that Gemini with the Chiron there. This is like a very cathartic, uh, cathartic life for him and what he does. And I think he brings that in his show he really brings that to people and really um i think he's even mentioned that how like that's what he what he do, part of what he does or what he wants to do where um this the comedy really uh helps people cope with their lives and the people that uh so at, on the show you can you can come up and they they'll pick you randomly to come up and um do your comedy and there's oh there's a couple people that are like you can tell they're very grateful they're always on the show and 
they're very grateful to have this experience where they can just come on a Monday. I think it's a Monday night. They can just show up on a Monday night and and do their comedy. It's not so much to get famous, but just um, it's just a very good community uh, event to have in your community, which we can see here with Uranus on his south node. He has it's going to be known as like a genius from his past. He's bringing this genius aspect and also this idea that. He is a community guy, and he's created this community in Austin around Kill Tony where people can just show up and, you know, it's kind of casual. It's gotten, I'm not sure what it was like early on. It's probably gotten more serious now that he's farther along. But last time I watched, it still has that community feel where like people are just, they're just hanging out. Uh, you know, everyone can get, has a chance to get on the stage if they get picked, etc., so he's a very community-oriented guy, very Aquarius with that Uranus on the south node. And we see that Jupiter rules that south node, and we see Jupiter's retrograde. So more emphasis on Jupiter and that Sagittarius and that this guy um, is a uh, seeker, we call him a truth seeker in his own right. And many comedians are. Check out my. I just did a. I just did George Carlin's birth chart as well. And what's something? Well, another thing that's interesting. As I'm doing this, and this happens a lot. As I'm doing this chart reading, Mars and Saturn are conjunct in Pisces. And I didn't even try to do this. I just thought a Tony Hinchcliffe should do his chart, and here we have Mars and Saturn, in Scorpio. Mars ruling Scorpio, and Scorpio more of that uh, that psychological sign that we see with his Mars and Saturn. He probably had some experiences in his life that were more on the harsher side that had that um, really had to um, really have forced him or led him into leading a life that. Um, is more psychological or he's had, he's had to really tap into his psychology to get through life. He does have a sextile there with that Jupiter. Very ambitious, which shows more ambition, more that ability to do the work, the daily, the daily grind. That Mars being retrograde, he, he may um, maybe a person who takes a little bit more time to think. They're not like a just He's just going to blurt out what he says. And and that's the interesting thing with him uh, when he does have these things to say so quickly. Um, it's it's a wonder if like in his mind he's like the first impulse. It's like slowly churning. like And then, um, and then he comes out with what he has to say and it's like almost perfect, well thought out, kind of, uh, well thought out statement or line that he gives. Uh, and that would be, I think that's that Mars retrograde really helps with that. So very well, well thought out man, I would say. We have this air, this trine between the moon and, and the Gemini. And someone just uh, commented on Andrew Huberman, his chart on his on my video on Andrew, Andrew Huberman. And having um, lots of air, they can be a cheater. And I would mention, I didn't mention in the video, um, Libra can be known as a philander. I wouldn't say all Libras cheat. Uh, that's certainly not true. Uh, but they can be, if, if you know, they can be the philander. Uh, Gemini can be the liar, the trickster. We see that here with the comedian. You, know, you definitely got to be uh, a, a trickster to be a comedian. And you can play, and like you can see with Tony Hinchcliffe, you can get away with just outright lies where people just don't know, are you lying, are you telling the truth? Because it's, it's supposed to be funny. So it's a positive way to use that Gemini, that if you are, if you do have a tendency to tell lies, I knew a Gemini son once, who we, he always exaggerated everything. He's, we wouldn't call him a liar, but he's definitely an exaggerator. And that, that can, 
you know, even if we brought it up, he still would do it. And that's just, that's part of being a Gemini in, in some for some people. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just how do you use it? And Tony Hinchcliffe definitely uses it well, at least at this point in the life. But very much emphasis on life path here too. Like he's come bringing that Uranus south node up into the north node. And um, I think bringing this Scorpio and Capricorn experience into his north node positively. And I don't know that much more about the show, I think, but I'm going to speculate that he did this on his own. And this is something that you can take from this video. Oftentimes, if you do your own thing, you can really see this positive expression and birth chart come to life. Uh, because when you do your own thing, you can really, uh, you can really explore this, these avenues of creativity. Whereas if you're working for someone else or um, you work for a big business, you can't always do that. You don't always know the inner workings and what's really going on. And this also shows the challenges with that in conjunct of Pluto and Jupiter. The challenges that are involved though when you do that, this man has pulled it off. But we see in the birth chart it was almost destiny in the making. We see he has a quintile. We don't know, well we don't know exactly where the moon is, but it's probably a quintile here between Neptune and the moon. Neptune at zero degrees is definitely uh, important. This guy is a performer, uh, a stage performer. He's creative. And we see that with the quintile, the talent aspect with the moon. And even with zero degrees, it's something new in the life. It's something that's, that's new in general. So we can see that with he's not a George Carlin. He's not a Dave Chappelle. He's not even a Joe Rogan on the level of uh, being a celebrity. And yet, look how much work he's done. And he may he's still young, so he may get there, but we see that newness there with that Neptune at zero degrees as opposed to, say, a 29 degree. We do see the Pluto at 29 degrees, though. So this, this the psychology piece and the digging in the deeper side of life is probably... Uh, more so has more so of a history with this guy in his psyche and his and his makeup at a, maybe a deeper soul level. Oh, and speaking of Neptune, he does have um, he has an exact in conjunct between Neptune. Actually, I really pointed on that Jupiter. Sometimes I do this. I do this kind of on the fly. It's not planned. Uh, Really, that um, yacht is with um, Neptune. So, um, for sure, a lot of the things I said with um, the creativity, the performance, really having to make that adjustment there, and uh, thinking about what is he going to do? How's he going to do this this comedy thing? How's he going to make it happen? I had that yacht actually with the North. I think with. Uh, Well, I am going to do my chart. Stay tuned. So we'll get into that. I'll get into that later. A very strong north node here. Ruler of the north node, Mercury, and Mercury's there. Venus there in the north node. Uh, bringing that money into the picture. You see he has a Venus sun conjunct, which is, uh, you know, oftentimes someone who has a good, uh, is attractive, Attractive, maybe you could say attractive personality as well because he has that Venus moon trine. So a guy, a very magnetic guy. And I don't know, you know, I've not met him in person, but part of his success is that he is so magnetic. If you see anything, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, anything pops up in the light that I'm not aware of. And please subscribe to the channel for more great astrology readings. And I hope you have a great day.